Keith here. In this short video I'll look at using R to do data transformations and also to calculate and display distance matrices. Um, uh, I'm working with the same data files as usual. Uh, they're in comma separated value format because this is easy to read into R and I've got the environmental, the species and also the spatial which are just the XY coordinates. Um, these files here which have a little notepad symbol sorry, coldis and panel utils are little functions written by the authors of numerical ecology with R for doing some graphical things and they're helpful. So let's first of all review the data file structure. So the first column just has labels for the row. We'll see that in the data files. The next three are categorical, identifying each sample, control impact, site and replicate, and then there are the four environmental variables. So over to using R inside R Studio. And I've run these commands already because some of them can take a few seconds to run. Uh, this top one for the lib paths ensures that packages are installed into the appropriate location on the USB drive. As I've got in the comment there, you don't need to do that if you're running with R on your hard drive. Then packages, I don't think I actually need those, but I don't want to spend time fiddling around working out which one I don't. And then special functions, as I said, written by the authors of numerical ecology with R. So next, I'll read in the three data files, environmental, spatial and species. So let's have a look at environmental again. There we go. It takes a little while. So you can see row name is there and then the variables after that. And now, if Q mode is looking at dissimilarity and distance measures as you can see for quantitative data and this is looking at relationships between the pairs of samples and that's normally what we want to do. So this command creates a new data set spe.bc remember that in R the dot the period is merely a separator it doesn't mean anything and this is a distance matrix and I've labelled it spe.bc because it's doing Bray-Curtis dissimilarity. And we can have a bit of a look at what that looks like. So there is Bray-Curtis dissimilarities uh, and that's the first row of the file. Now for species, often species ne data need to be transformed in untransformed form, the very abundant species can dominate the patterns. So I can run this command and now I've created another file, uh, another data set here, bcsqrt. So that's the square root of the species and you can see square root there and all I've done is put square root and put the species data inside. Uh, one thing I should explain here, for the species, I am using columns 4 to 53. So that's leaving out the first three columns, which are the categorical variables, because I just want to look at the species data. And there's the top of the file again, and you can see some of those values have changed a lot, and some haven't changed much at all. And that will be due to the differences in terms of abundance of species. Okay, now something that's being used fairly frequently these days to display numerical values are things called heat maps. So here's one, and you can see this is on the um, untransformed species data. It's a little difficult to see here. Let's make it a bit bigger. And doesn't help things a lot, but I'm running in a small screen so here, so if you're working full size, you'll be able to see things more clearly. 
Uh, the first matrix is the original one, and then the second one is put in order of the dissimilarities. And so, and you can start to see patterns in here where sites and groups of sites come up with similar dissimilarities. So down here, for example, these bottom are all the CO, all the control, and all the controls there, and they have all have very similar values in terms of dissimilarity. Now, in our mode analysis, we're looking at relationship among the variables. That's rarely done with the species because it's really meaningful, but it can be done with the environmental variables to give us an idea of relationships among those. So, um, that next line there creates a. Well, let's get back to the data here. Creates a set of variables or a set of numbers. Here we go. Let's look at it. It's easier. It's, it's calculating Pearson's correlation coefficient between all of the variables, and you can see it up here. So depth highly correlated with sediment and negatively correlated with nutrients and so on. Now, in doing this, I haven't, and I'll change the file to do this, I haven't made depths positive. You can see here depths are still negative and it's a good idea to make depths positive because that makes some of the relationships easier to understand. Uh, then I've just got it to round those values to two decimal places and we're displaying those there. Okay, moving on. It's also helpful to look at scatter plots displaying environmental variables against each other and that can tell us whether environmental variables need to be transformed before analysis. So what we've got here, yep, what we've got here are Pearson correlation coefficients for the four variables. And again, this should be a little bit easier if it's bigger. So we've got histograms on the axis down here, uh, the correlations over here, and the graphs of the relationships down here. So you can see depth versus sediment is fairly linear uh, because these samples are taken at particular locations, they're fairly closely grouped together when it comes to depth. So there's one group here in a depth zone and another group here uh, in a shallower depth zone. Um, now for some of these there doesn't look to be too much relationship and for others there is so sediment versus nutrients there's quite a nice relationship there. And over here the colour and the bolding indicates the significance, so 3 asterisks P less than 0 0.001, 1 asterisk P less than 0 0.05. Now let's keep going and I'll just run all of this off at once. So uh, now you're getting warnings here and I haven't been able to get rid of that but the graphs seem to be fine. Uh, and all I'm doing here, instead of using Pearson's correlation coefficient, is using Spearman. And the reason for doing that is if we're not sure that the relationships really are linear, Spearman might be a better option because Spearman is just testing for a monotonic increasing or decreasing relationship. Okay, we'll stop there. This is just another way of looking at some values. Uh, and looking at calculating out dissimilarities. Now because it is very easy to calculate dissimilarities, you can see here it's just a single line of code. There's no need to run this particular R script for doing things like cluster analysis or elimination. I can simply run the line of code in those.